Peace Stand. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to the third day of our Simbang Gabi here at the Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawa. And as we gather, let us call to mind our sins first and once again ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my brothers and, and sisters, sisters they have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what they have done and in what they have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of her virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who are weighed down from of old by slavery beneath the yoke of sin may be set free by the newness of the long-awaited nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Peace be seated. Jeremiah prophesies the birth of a king a descendant of David, which will usher in new hope and new life for the people. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved, 
Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice. Therefore the days will come, says the Lord, when they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but rather, as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of the house of Israel up from the land of the north, and from all the lands to which I banished them, they shall again live on their own land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds, and blessed forever be his glorious name. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Please stand. Alleluia, Alleluia. O leader of the house of Israel, giver of the law to Moses on Sinai, come to rescue us with your mighty power. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said to the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And when Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. May their friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please visit him. Ang persona po ng ating ikatlong gabi, itong simbang gabi sa ating ebanghelyo, ay walang iba kundi si San Jose. Si San Jose na tinatawag sa ebanghelyo na matapat. Tunay nga namang si San Jose ay matuwid, mabuti, matino. Ibig sabihin, tunay ngang matapat. Ito ang nais iparating sa ating lahat nitong ikatlong simbang gabi. Kung meron mang magandang lesson, ito yung katapatan ni San Jose. 
Iniimbitahan po tayo lahat na narito. Nawa tayo din ay maging katulad ni San Jose na isang taong matapat, isang taong matuwid, mabuti at matino. Isang buhay na may katapatan. Ang tanong, paano nga ba maging matapat? Kung titignan nun natin sa kwento ni San Jose sa kanyang buhay, makikita natin umusbong yung kanyang katapatan dahil sa mga pagsubok. Lumabas ang kanyang punay na karakter na pagiging matino, mabuti, batuwid, nang dahil sa mga, sa mga hapis at lungkot ng kanyang buhay. Lumabas, umusbong, kusang umusbong ang kanyang katapatan dahil sa mga pagsubok sa buhay. Marahil ang pinakaunang pagsubok na masasabi natin, pinakaunang sabihin natin struggle o challenge sa kanyang buhay ay yung una niyang nalaman na si Maria ay nagdadalang tao. Kaya nga naman kung titignan niyo sa unang bahagi na ating kwento, talaga nga namang lungkot na lungkot siya. Tunay nga namang isang pagsubok. Eh hindi pa nga sila ikinasal, hindi pa sila nagsama, bigla nang nalaman niya na si Maria ay biglang buntis na. Isa nga namang very, very disappointing moment sa buhay niya. Sa ilitong lito, lungkot at hapis ang kanyang naranasan nung una niyang nalaman ang pagsubok na ito. Alam niyo ito mga pagsubok mga kapatid, lahat po pinagdaanan natin. Maski po yung mga, mga, mga apostoles ng ating Panginoon, dumaan din po sa mga pagsubok na ito. Katulad na lamang ni San Pedro, Ilang beses niyang dininay ang ating Panginoon. Siya rin mismo ay dumaan sa pagsubok, pagkalito, disappointing moment, sinfulness, moments of sinfulness sa buhay. Nagkamali, nagkasala. Dumaan din sa pagsubok. Meron din isang kwento tungkol sa isang tinatawag na Zacchaeus. Kung maalala niyo sa kwento ng Biblia, siya ay isang taong makasalanan, mayaman dahil nagpakayaman sa yaman ng iba. Tax collector eh. Bagkos nung nakilala na ang Diyos, siya rin ay nagbago, nagising, at kusang umusbong ang katinuan. Nang dahil sa pagsubok na iyon, si Zacchaeus ay nagbago. Handa niyang ibalik ang lahat na kanyang ninakaw. Ibinigay niya ang kanyang yaman sa iba. Ganon din si San Pedro. Matapos umusbong ng dahil sa mga pagsubok, umusbong ang kabutihan at ang katinuan, siya ay nangakong sumunod habang buhay sa Diyos. At ngayon sa kwento ni San Jose, nang dahil sa mga pagsubok na iyon, umusbong po ang kanyang katapatan. At alam niyo po ba, hindi lamang nagtatapos ang pagsubok na iyon sa panganakan sa pagbubuntis na Maria. Sunod-sunod po ang kanyang mga pagsubok. Marahil makita mo lang yung anak ng Diyos. Alam niya na ang batang ipapanganak ni Maria ang siya magiging Diyos ng lahat. Siya maging magliligtas ng lahat. Hindi ko may imagine na makita niya ang batang iyon nasa sabsaban. Hindi po nakapulupot sa lampin. Sabi sa Ebanghelyo, swabbling clothes. Ibig sabihin, yung telang gamit sa, sa isang hayop, sa tupa, na ginagamit kapag ilalabas yung, yung, yung tupa. Masakit kay San Jose iyon. Makita niya na ang magliligtas sa mundo ay nasa sabsaban. At tuloy-tuloy ang kanyang pagsubok. Naalala niyo yung kwento niya kung saan siya'y kinakailangang pumunta sa isang bayan na hindi siya kilala, wala siyang kakilala. May imagine nyo lang po yung lungkot na nag-iisa ka at wala kang kakilala. Tuloy-tuloy ang kanyang sinapit ng mga, pag, mga pagsubok. Bagkos, usang umusbong ang kanyang katapatan. Ang tanong, bakit 
umusbong ang katapatan. Bakit hindi umusbong ang kanyang pagiging mayabang? Hindi umusbong yung kanyang pag-give up? Kasi kung ako yun ay give up na ako. Ang tanong, bakit nananatili siyang matapat? Bakit? Yun ay dahil sa Espiritu Santo. Kaya kung mayroon po akong pangalawang nais iparating sa inyo, ito po, ang sekreto ng pagiging matapat ay ang pagiging bukas sa Espiritu Santo. Bukas sa Diyos. Sa kwento na ating Ibanghelyo na naginip si San Jose, kinuusap siya ng mahal na anghel. Dahil sa kanyang pagiging bukas, ayun, sinunod niya at nanatili siyang totoo at buo sa kanyang pananampalataya sa Diyos. Marahil ganun dun sa atin. Sa gitna ng ating mga pagsubok, mga kapatid, nawa, mananatili tayong bukas sa Espiritu Santo. Kaya ako po'y natutuwa na tayo narito sa loob ng Basilika. Yung iba ay nasa labas. Nakikisa nitong simbang gabi. Hindi ganun kadali. Dahil may dobling pag-iingat pa rin ang ating pagpasok dito sa Basilika. Bagkos, nananatili tayong buo at ganap sa ating pananampalataya. Ibig sabihin na sa gitna ng pandemic na ito, bukas ang ating puso sa Espiritu Santo. Bukas sa biyaya ng Diyos. Bukas sa grasya ng Diyos. Kaya nga naman kung titingnan natin sa buhay ni Maria at ni San Jose, consistent, tuloy-tuloy, nananatili silang buo at tapat sa kanilang pananampalataya. Buo at tapat sa kanilang pagtitiwala sa Diyos. Sila'y nabu namuhay ng matapat dahil sa pagiging bukas sa biyaya ng Diyos. Alam ko, mahirap ang, mag, ang, pagdada, ang pagdadaanan o dumaan sa mga pagsubok. Hindi ko natin ikakailayan. Eh kasi pag pagsubok ang pinag-uusapan, dito yan eh, puso. May sakit. Masakit. Umiiyak tayo. May katapat na luha yan. Sinaktan ka, iniwan ka, pinabayaan ka, baniwaliwala ka. May kasamang dito yan. Kaya e paano namin, Father, maging bukas sa Espiritu Santo? Eh, ang sakit-sakit. Paano nga ba? Minsan, kinakailangan natin yung tinatawag natin yung i-transcend. Kung babalikan natin yung kwento ni Zacchaeus, maganda yung image na ginawa niya. Dahil sa buhay ni Zacchaeus, nakatutok lamang siya sa kanyang kahinaan. Nakatutok lamang sa pleasure ng kanyang pagnanakaw, nakatutok lamang sa isang bagay. Marahil tayo kapag nasa pagsubok, nakatutok lamang tayo sa sakit. Nakatutok lamang sa negative na bagay. Pero yung image na ginawa ni Zacchaeus, siya ay umakyat sa puno. Umakyat. Mas tinignan, pinila niyang tignan yung ibang aspeto sa buhay. At mga kapatid, totoo nga naman, sa buhay natin kapag tayo nasaktan, huwag tayong pumayag na pagtatapos lamang doon. Umakyat tayo, transcend, at tignan ng ibang bahagi ng ating buhay. At Jack, makikita mo na may mga taong nagmamahal sa iyo. At makikita mo na may pag-asa pa ang buhay. At makikita mo nandun ang Diyos kapiling mo. At yun mismo ang nangyari kay San Jose. Hindi niya hinayaang tumutok lamang sa, sa pagsubok. Mas pinili niyang tingnan din ang ibang aspeto ng buhay. At nakita niya na hindi siya nag-iisa. Kapiling niya ang anghel, kapiling niya ang Espiritu Santo, kapiling niya ang Diyos. Kaya mga kapatid, 
simpleng imbitasyon sa ating lahat nitong pangatlong gabi ng simbang gabi. Mamuhay tayong matapat. Paano na mananatili ito, mananatili ang katapatan, bukas sa Espiritu Santo? Paano? Huwag tayong pumayag na mas hayaan nating manging ibabaw ang kasamaan. Huwag tayong pumayag na nakatutok lamang sa sama ng loob. We don't deserve that. You don't deserve that. Tumingin ka sa ibang aspeto ng buhay. Nandun ang pamilya. Nandun ang kaibigan. Andun ang pag-asa. Andun ang mga opportunities. Andun ang Diyos. Hindi ka nag-iisa. We all stand. We pray especially for fathers that following the example of St. Joseph, they may mirror your love, O Heavenly Father, here on earth. And trusting solely on your mercy, we pray, Lord, come to save us. Lord, come to save us. May the Pope, bishops, and the clergy, like St. Joseph, Mirror your fatherly care for the people entrusted to their care as shepherds, we pray. Lord, come to save us. May government officials act like responsible parents in providing for the needs of the people, keeping them in safety and enhancing their development, we pray. Lord, come to save us. Like the sleeping Saint Joseph, May fathers turn to you, Father, in moments of difficulties and dream of a bright future for their children, we pray. Lord, come to save us. May fathers find work to support their family and take comfort and strength from the love of their wife and children, we pray. Lord, come to save us. May all fathers and brethren who have gone ahead of us experience the Lord's countenance with the presence of all his saints and angels, we pray. Lord, come to save us. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, come to save us. O God, you made Saint Joseph the guardian of the Redeemer. Through his intercession, Watch over your family, redeemed by your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May the sacrifice to be offered to you, O Lord, make us acceptable to your name, that we may merit for all eternity to be the companions of church by whose death our own mortality was healed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. To lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give the thanks Almighty God. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, of fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfold, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. For you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep 
in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, Saint Dominic, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all.
Mas di na. Sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please kneel. Let's pray that the forthcoming elections may be, truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides the destinies of nations. And let us pray together, deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, intimidation, violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, wrath, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord. From gullibility to the deceptive and blindness of perspective. Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. Let us pray together. Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Be hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That care for creation may never be ignored. Hear us, Lord. That solidarity may guide the path of peace and development. Hear us, Lord. That gen genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray, Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others and grow in holiness. Guide our politics as you guide our lives. May our political engagement for voters and candidates 
bring glory to your loving name, and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. May we receive your mercy in the midst of your temple, O Lord, and show fitting honor to the coming solemnities of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikiisa nitong ating pangatlong gabi ng simbang gabi. Patuloy po tayong magdoble ingat at higit sa lahat ipanalangin ang isang mapayapang kapaskuhan. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. May God who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary willed in His great kindness to redeem the human race be pleased to enrich you with His blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass ascended, we go in peace. Thanks be to God. We shall now do the prayer for the blessing of the sick and the blessing of all your religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that with the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor of the Blessed Virgin Mar Mary, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may these rosaries and all religious articles be blessed and made holy in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh! 